Hello everyone, I am Caesar the Chimpanzee, and I am here to inform you about the threat and some possible solutions of particular invasive species. Invasive species are organisms that do not belong to a certain geographic area naturally. They often outcompete native life since they do not have any natural threats. Habitat destruction and pollution tend to detriment animal specialists since animal specialists are better at a particular niche while climate change benefits animal journalists, and those are the type of animals that have multiple niches, like they could do any job really. As the world warms and becomes more populated and industrious, these hardier, more adaptive animals will swiftly outcompete the native population. Invasive species can spread intentionally and or by accident. For example, Zebra mussels came from the Caspian and Black Seas of Eurasia. They attach to the holes of ships or their larvae are transported in the ballast water of ships into every body of water that that ship goes into. They are mostly invading the Great Lakes and other eastern waters of the U.S. These fingernail-sized bivalves attach to man-made structures and machinery and slowly corrode them. They also smell their native mussels by attaching to them, and the native bivalves have their ancestral functions such as eating or mating stopped by this. The zebra mussels filter out 90% of particulates in the water and greatly increase visibility. This can cause a shift in the ecosystem. They are able to reproduce on their own and they can attach to more substrates than most bivalves due to their byssus, which are basically like tentacle light projections that allow them to have a better grip on the surface. They prefer a smooth black surface, so I propose to insert pillars and or other mammary structures that only the zebra muscle can attach to. We then can take them out when they are full of the muscles. This sounds good on paper and could work, but it does not provide for the removal of already existing populations. A remote control submarine can also successfully remove large amounts of targeted zebra mussels with relatively free environmental consequences, unlike poisons and drainage. Another invasive species that was intentional is the cane toad. This amphibian was brought from South America to Australia, Florida, and many other places around the world to kill off another invasive animal, the cane beetle. However, this toad was more interested in the native animals, so it quickly gobbled the competition, literally. The animals that tried to eat the cane toad would end up becoming ill since the toad has glands behind its eyes that secrete deadly neurotoxins. The toad will eat anything that could fit in its mouth, and then the toad does like human settlements since the vegetation is sparsely spread, so deforestation actually helps it out, and it can handle salt water but it cannot handle the cold. Identifying this animal and humanely utilizing it will help out but the restoration of the natural habitat for the native animals will do the most good. The brown tree snake was brought into Guam by hitching a ride on cargo from the Solomon Island. Guam has never had any native snake before so this is why the brown tree snake eradicated most of the endemic avian life so animals such as the adorable Guam whale had to be taken into zoos and other islands. These snakes are mildly venomous, but they are rear fang snakes, so they would have to really chew on you to inject their venom. But they also cause power outages by climbing electrical poles. They are most infamous for damaging Guam's ecosystem by causing most of the native birds and lizards to go extinct. The U.S. Wildlife Services are researching traps and poisons to better eradicate the snake from vulnerable populations. They also catch by hand and use canines to sniff out every time they transport cargo to and from Guam. The pet trade is a main way of invasive species distribution. The red ear pond slider turtle is everywhere in the U.S. since they are the most so terrapin and from a number of sources in my personal experience. They are highly adaptable. They reach sexual maturity quickly and due to aggressive nature, they can easily outcompete native turtles. Another popular reptilian native to South America that is now taking over Florida is the famous green iguana. I'll take it from here, Caesar. Why? Why not, Caesar? I am an iguana iguana. But this, this was supposed to be my episode. These and with the Burmese python were popular as pets, but when they became too large for pet owners, they would release them into the wild. Green iguanas are excellent climbers and swimmers and can basically eat any plant material. They are out competing native animals with the same niche and are even affecting ones indirectly. An example of that is 
the endangered Miami blue butterfly relies on a plant to lay its eggs on, but the iguana eats these plants. The iguana, as with the past two reptiles, are captured for research or euthanized. And this is pretty much what you do with any invasive animal. And there are some policies to help control the spread. Puerto Rico is overrun by them, and Florida has an anti cruelty laws on them, so you can't touch me. But Hawaii grants you a 200000 fine if you have one of me. The green iguana has a major weakness of the cold, and since where it's native to, there are no four seasons, like how we have in the States. They just have a wet and a dry one. When winter comes in Florida, the iguanas freeze, so they are easy to collect. However, due to climate change, they may be able to expand their territory further north. And invasive species are often seen as the second most endangerment of biodiversity right behind habitat destruction, which in most cases fuels the spread of invasive species. For some of these animals, it is still possible to stop. Cats, rats, and hogs are examples of animal generalists that spread across the world due to European colonization. They dispatch many endemic life forms such as the dodo and maybe even some we still do not know they exist. The best strategy to combat all these animals is to prevent it from happening in the first place. So clean the bodies of vehicles such as planes and trains and boats as thoroughly as possible when traversing the world. Adding more invasive species to stop another will not work since they are more than likely already adapted to each other to maintain equality. So basically they won't make each other extinct because they are used to combating each other so they maintain a population number that this keeps them healthy. So other solutions will be needed. Do not buy wild exotic animals if it is illegal and especially if you don't know truly what you are in for and continue to support this planet. So support by advocating, educating, or even just having the earth in the back of your mind when making decisions. Biodiversity are choices. The more we have, the better our chances are at defeating climate change. And let's be serious. If we really want to make a change in the environment, we have to stop only caring about our own self-interest. And by ourselves, I mean the fortunate. There are people around the world who have natural disasters happen constantly in their lives. And there are species that are going extinct even before we give them a scientific name. And we're over here worried about our economy, even though it's pretty healthy compared to the rest of the world. So the key to make change is to have compassion and the motivation to do so. We have the potential, but it's whether or not we're willing to live not only for I, but for us. It is our responsibility to protect our kin and to make sure we are all good too. And if we do decide to leave this house, let's make sure we keep it tidy and keep it a home for the others before we do go. Until next time, environmentalists. Neon is out.